Hello, welcome to PlayStation Access, my name's Rob, and welcome back to the Tuesday Checklist. Every Tuesday, the Access team takes inspiration from a recent or upcoming release to start a conversation about some of our favourite games. With Call of Duty World War II almost upon us, we thought what better time to sit down and reminisce about our fondest COD memories, you know, from back in our day, when we could actually hold our own in PvP and no one knew what wall running even was. I'll kick things off with my favourite bit from Modern Warfare 2. Uh, so a Call of Duty moment that I will never forget is in uh, Modern Warfare 2. Um, I remember being so engrossed in the story of Soap and Captain Price, the whole Modern Warfare trilogy is just so amazing. Um, but you don't see Price for ages in Modern Warfare 2. And at the end of the first Modern Warfare, there's the whole kind of, is he dead, isn't he dead question, because he's kind of lying there on the ground while someone gives him a CPI, like, oh, Price, no. And uh, so you go on this mission to rescue an important VIP who's being held captive in a Russian gulag, which is a really not very nice prison at all and so you go in with your squad and I remember it being a really really tough mission actually you have to fight your way through this gulag it's really atmospheric and the lighting in it is amazing and you like breach this door and you finally find the guy you're supposed to be helping and you're thinking it's going to be this guy he's been in there like five years six years or something like that so you're thinking oh man this guy is going to be like a husk He's going to be on the floor like, oh, how you, I, was, I was anticipating one of those annoying levels where you have to have someone on your shoulders and maybe you can only use a, a pistol or something, like creeping out like that. I was like, I don't want to do that. But anyway, you breach through this door and it turns out the prisoner is Price and he's just there beating the crap into a man. Just like <laughs> six years in the gulag has done nothing and he's still just the ultimate badass with his amazing facial hair and he's like, I can't do his accent, but <laughs> good to see you, so good to see you, so. Oh, and he gives you a little, <laughs> how's it going, mate? Yeah. And then it's just you get to good fight. To see you. <laughs> You've been in a gulag for six years. <laughs> All right, mate. Good to see you. How's it going? Yeah, yeah. How's it going, mate? Busting out. Yes. <laughs> we are busting out, we're busting Price out, and then you get to fight your way out with Price, and it's just the most yeah kind of pumped up brilliant piece of gameplay ever and I think you get out by your squad kind of drop ropes in through the ceiling they're there in helicopters and you just kind of grab onto them and you just get hauled right up through this gulag they just got the pacing of all the dramatic action beats so spot on in Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 especially I remember thinking this is this is peak first person shooter campaigning right now just I'm so engrossed in the whole Hollywood thrill of it and I was so excited to see Price again. I don't know what he'd been doing for five years in this gulag. Obviously just Beating having himself. a great time, I think. <laughs> just <laughs> having a brilliant, brilliant time. The moment I've chosen from Call of Duty's past is not really a moment, it's an, a, an entire level. And I would go so far as to say it's the best, the single best level in any first person shooter ever. It's all gillied up from Modern Warfare. When I played that the first time, I'd never played anything like that. I mean, Call of Duty, you think of as being quite loud and um, full on. You know, definitely, definitely little to no stealth in it. All Gillied Up was could, like the complete antithesis of that. First of all, it's a flashback, which is really, really cool. It's a flashback with one of the, if not the most iconic characters from the Call of Duty series. Captain Price, although he's actually Lieutenant Price in this flashback, and you are him. You finally have his beard and tash. Although I don't know if he's well, got he them. Have had it back then. He might not have. He might not have. It's not clear. And he's all gillied up, so oh, well, you don't see yourself anyway. But you wouldn't be able to tell. Um, so that is very exciting for a start. Second of all, you are all gillied up. You are playing a stealth section. You've got. A uh, uh, Macmillan, he might be Captain Macmillan, and he's your senior, he's your boss, and he is telling you what to do, and you have to, this is like the thing, you have to do what he says, not like to complete the mission, but to like survive, you know, you are undertaking a stealth mission and you can't give away your position. And it's just like a completely different take on a Call of Duty level, it was like amazing. So you start off, um, you know, just in a field. You start off approaching these little outposts, they've got a couple of 
uh, guys who are up to no good, and you have to... <laughs> <laughs> Making trouble in the neighborhood. And it's just like, it's so weird. It's just tiny little things that seem incredibly innovative, like there are two guys, and he says, take one of them out without the other one noticing. And there's straight away, that's like, not just kill these guys. It's like a little puzzle, take one of them out, You've got to figure out who's looking at who, who can be seen by the other one. You shoot one of them and he takes out the other one. And it's it feels really coordinated. You know, it's probably really simple behind the scenes where it's like, whichever one he shoots, <laughs> the game shoots the other one. But at the time you're like, yes, me and McMillan are a team. We are smashing this. Um, there's also bits where it's like, there's a guy around the corner. Um, oh, he's Scottish. I can't do a Scottish accent. We could just slip past or you could take him out, it's up to you. And it's like, oh, well, I'm definitely taking him out and <laughs> it's my choice, amazing. And I don't think it has any impact on anything, but it's just nice to be given that choice. Um, there's so many good, good bits in this level. There are parts where there's that really kind of famous bit, I guess, where he's just like, get down, and you just have to get down. And there's a patrol coming, uh, the men walking through this field and, uh, and a tank, I think, and and as if just knowing what gamers are like, he's like, seriously, there's too many of them. Don't, you know, like, <laughs> don't, just just call it. Just stay out of sight. And you have to anticipate where these guys are coming and they walk or, you know, the tank drives right past you. It's incredibly actually tense. Um, there's like, there's a sniper in a, in a church tower that you have to take out. There's loads of just these moments. And this is just, this is just, it turns out the kind of first section of the level, you are on your way to do a, a snipe mission, a proper good snipe mission uh, to take out Imran Zakayev. And so the mission is, the first part is getting to your kind of like stakeout place, or I don't know what they call, what do the snipers call the place they do a, do a shot from? A sniper's nest. It's making your way to the nest. Then the second part of the mission is making that shot. And that is like, that's great because it's the most, I assume, kind of physically realistic shooting in the game, where you are shooting like a mile and you know, there's wind and there's like curvature of the earth you have to take into account and you know you've it's the classic where the guy gets out and there's a little flag in the background that's just like it's been put there especially just so you can see what the wind's doing and he's like i'm not going to tell you when to take the shot like you just have to <laughs> you just have to hit this guy taking that shot is great the bullet like curves through the air and then there's the whole escape when it goes wrong, a helicopter turns up, suddenly there's like 20 minutes on the clock. And usually you expect these sort of timers to be like, you've got two minutes to escape. It's like 20 minutes or something. It's like, this is huge. And you are running away, um, Macmillan gets injured. And then there's like this showdown part where you have to, it's like tower defense. It's like, the guys are gonna be here in, in 30 seconds. Here's some landmines, you know, and you set up and you're just waiting for your helicopter to come. and. It's just an incredible mission, like a completely incredible mission. You know, there are some games that would that would get, you get by on all of those mechanics that are in that one mission, but they packed it into that one thing. The fact that it's price and it informs the story of, well, his story and also Zakayev's story um, for the rest of the game, I just think it's like just truly, truly innovative and definitely, in my opinion, the best single level of any first person shooter ever. Or of any game, maybe. Maybe of any game, yeah. It's, it's so good. So an unforgettable Call of Duty moment for me is actually a self-inflicted one. It's not a campaign moment or a, a cutscene or a level. Um, so let me take you back six years. I've just come out of university. Like storytelling that's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just getting you in the mood. Uh, take, take you back six years. I've just come out of university. My first real job uh, in games. Um, I've come into the office my first day, doing my work, um, it's lunchtime, all, all the, the cool guys are there playing FIFA at lunch, can't really get involved, you know, they've already got six people, three on three on a PlayStation, I'm trying to get involved, can't really, peeking around the corner, bit sad about it, eating my lunch at my desk, and then another guy that started the same day as me, David Jackson, <gasps> it's me, has said, uh, I said, I've brought some games in, we can play. Because there, there's, a, there's, a, there's another PlayStation available that no one's using. And uh, one of the games that he's brought in is Call of Duty 3. And my first thought is, that's a bit strange. 
It's sort of like a guy bringing some beer to a, to a barbecue and it's alcohol free. You know, why are you bringing COD 3? Why not bring COD 4? Why not bring World at War? Why not bring, you know, something more recent? You know, it's like we had like four COD games since then. But he's brought COD 3. And I think, fine, I'll humor this guy. And we load it up and we're playing split screen COD 1v1 on these maps that are definitely not designed for 1v1. They're probably eight player maps, 16 player maps, huge sprawling things with like trucks and trenches. And uh, there's sort of an eerie silence because we don't really know each other that well. There's a bit of small talk going on. Uh, the TV's turned down quite, quite low. Every now and then there's like a cheer from across the other side of the room. Someone's got a goal in FIFA. I was playing in those FIFA games. You might have been there, Rob, yeah. playing the FIFA games. I was say you were one of the, the cool, cool guys. guys. That's sure, right. man. That's so, right. uh, Real so, cool. so Dave and I are slowly starting to get to know each other. And then I'll just die from nowhere. Just a sniper shot. And Dave's just slowly just giggling to himself, just having a great time. <laughs> and then we'll just respawn, go again. I'll just run across this map. Eight, time will pass. I mean, we get an hour for lunch and maybe 50 minutes will pass and then I'll just die again without seeing him. I'll never see Dave in this map. And uh, suddenly it occurs to me that Dave's brought Call of Duty 3 in for no other reason than he knows it very well and he probably plays it a lot. That is libelous. It's probably the only game that he plays at home. I and deny he's thought, this allegation. He's thought to himself, what game can I bring in to make myself the big man in the office? <laughs> That's, that's what he's thought. No! I'm going to find true. someone new. I'm going to introduce him to COD 3. I'm going to pick some easy sniper shots at this guy. But, you, uh, pick, you pick the Call of Duty, Dan. I will, I will beat you on it. You, you, your Call of Duty, well, you name the one. All I'm saying is we could have played Zombies. A nice friendly co-op game. Well, but we didn't. But it turned out alright because we bonded over that and now we're friends. Well, I Up until we now. <laughs> Okay, so my pick from uh, the Call of Duty series, there were loads I could have gone for, and they are concentrated probably around uh, Modern Warfare. I think that, because just of when it came out is when I got into the series. And specifically, what I've gone for, rather than a kind of a single player moment, I, I got the most out of the Special Ops missions in Modern Warfare 2. Ah, oh, so good. <clears throat> and I don't, know, I don't know if you remember these, but these were like, you could play them split screen, um, and you could like you could play them online with a pal and I love I think there's something about co-op which is great anyway I mean we've all spoken about our best moments in the Call of Duty series as a whole and what I liked about the special ops missions was, was like they didn't bother with all the bits where you're just running in between it was yeah. like here is just a great moment just go and play it with a friend also there's a rating you can get which means you're going to play it 10 times at least um, and like they started off they were like grouped into I remember like alpha down to Echo, oh, yeah. like cool military alphabet names. <laughs> um, and like the first one, which is probably the one I played most just over and over because it's the very first one, was Sniper Fi, which is like you're just on top of a roof and people are coming. Oh, yeah, that's and a good one. And you have, um, you could like claymores and obviously a sniper rifle and you just shoot people as they run through. Um, and I remember that was uh, the first time I think, because I played this maybe even before I finished the campaign, where I got to use like, just get a little laptop and you just like, you suddenly you're inside the laptop. Yeah. It's like, oh, I think I'll drop a bomb on these guys over here and then they blow up. Um, and they got progressively harder, the missions to the point where, um, well there's two things I really like it about, about spec, uh, the Spec Ops missions as a whole, were the difficulty but also the coordination that they like made you have and I guess the two things came together. They got harder and harder, so you know like everybody's, it was like three stars, three stars, two stars, yeah. oh, I need quite a few stars to unlock the next bit so let's do all these again. Um, and there was, I remember really, sp the ones that are burned in my mind, a Homeland Security, which is like a, a bigger level, it's another kind of wave attack one, a bit like Sniper Fi, um, but you're in like, it's this kind of faceless small area, there's like a couple, it's basically as if someone like smashed up a, or like invaded a Chiquitos or something, it's like, <laughs> Um, like there's a restaurant and a petrol station, uh, and you can yeah. get you can get on the roof. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, like a burger joint. That's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But and, and you can get down the roof. There's a couple of routes around it. Like, I mean, it's one of the joys of Call of Duty. Like, you know, the Modern Warfare games was the kind of militarization of like urban spaces. It's like, what if we had a giant, you know? Yeah. But this is a side thing anyway. Don't helicopters turn up? Yes, they do, and, and they drop in onto the roof, and yeah. you, and you, you have RPGs. You, can shoot yeah. the helicopters you have to get an RPG yeah. from maybe the garage. Yeah, it's great, um, and that was incredible. I just remember that being super hard just because of the enemies but then one where, where the enemy was maybe within was uh, I, and I can't remember who I used to play this co-op with so I can't even name and shame them but um, there was a mission called Evasion quite early on and you'll probably remember when I describe it is the snow mission yeah. where you just have to get past patrols and they've got dogs oh yeah and in like a wood yeah, like exactly. Forest. Yeah, and it was because you could is the mixture of stealth. It was a bit like all gillied up. It's kind of that kind of thing, and because there's two of you, and you, but it was like, I'll Dave, shoot the guy on the left. Yeah, and when you described it, the computer doing it for you, you're like, whichever one you do, the, the computer's going to do the other one, and you feel like I'm basically in the SAS. Yeah. And in this, you realise how far away from the SAS you are because you're doing it with a friend, and they shoot a tree. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you shoot a guy in the shoulder, and he's not dead yet. And then the dog starts barking, and yeah, then you're like, oh, this is over. That mission was amazing. And I think the thing about evasion that I really liked was, um, and, and all of them really, especially when they when they got harder, was you you play because they're such concentrated little moments you play them over and over again so that in evasion it'd be like we're gonna go here five seconds shoot that guy and then we need to move here and we might split up at this point you know like a proper mission plan yeah. I haven't had to do that for ages that yeah. was great as a man Rob who has facial hair Mm. Do you think it's realistic that Captain Price could have maintained? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I have to comb mine, as you know, like every five minutes or so because it just gets so kind of messy and tangled. If I was in a prison, it would just be. It would be. It would just be messy all the time, wouldn't it? They must have let Price take his beard comb in. I mean, I wouldn't be taking it off him. Let us know in the comments about some of your favourite Call of Duty memories. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more of them every Tuesday. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.